Right now, I'm in Bangkok, Thailand, escaping the New Year's cold and cloud back in China. Thanks to all of you, I have a job I can do on the road, at least for a little while. Travel is a perfect opportunity to review some new devices I've been wanting to take a look at. The first is the Fimi Palm, a handheld gimbal camera. Now, I know what you're thinking. Same as me, isn't that just an, an Osmo Pocket knockoff? Well, sort of. If you remember from my Osmo review, the biggest problem it has, it's it's very narrow field of view. I have to use it with a lens adapter and take that adapter on and off each time I turn the camera on. That's a huge limitation. If DJI had fixed that and produced a new Osmo Pocket, I would be revealing that. But they didn't. And Fimi saw an opportunity and jumped on it. They have a wide view of view by default. So let's unbox it and take a look. Oh. Okay, there looks like uh, there is a plastic enclosure to protect the camera lens. I can 3D print another uh, cover if I want. Put it aside. So this looks like a joystick. Uh, oh yeah, this is a joystick and on the DJI Osmo, it doesn't have that, but they both have a power button, same power button. Okay, uh, and the screen. So from the appearance, the screen, the Fimi uh, control panel is bigger than the DJI one. Okay, let's turn it on. It says I haven't inserted SD card. All right, let me find SD card. So they both have the SD card slot on the side, right? Please format it, okay. So if I want to quit quick out, I can push the joystick to quick out. So right now, let's take a look at the menu. So this, unlike the DJI uh, Osmo, I, I found that it has a lot of options. So I got a little bit confused because it's my first time to use this. And on DJI Osmo, it's just straightforward. If I swipe it down, you see this have FPV and pitch lock. And then if I press it again, it has gimbal lock and follow mode. Yes, this gimbal has a follow mode. And uh, if you swipe it, uh, this is into their uh, setting system. This is the multi frames, camera settings, gimbal settings, system settings. So for the DJI Osmo, I need to put on the lens adapter and last time i broke it in uh when i uh, demoed to my friends in the airport i think i broke it so the lens is broken and i haven't replaced it i haven't changed it to a new one but this one this one has a wide angle lens it's 128 degrees and the dji osmo is i forgot i gotta check yeah but this seems it takes a little bit of time to learn learn it but not difficult it just it has a lot of options just as i said i need to test it in the real world and see the quality so that i could recommend you to buy it or or not so right now we are in a mall called mega plaza a lot of chinese come here and you can see in the background we have a lot of um how do you call this in China, we call hand model. We we use you can use res of uh, yeah resin printer to make this and color them. Um, so since I have 3D printers, I don't need to buy any of this. I can make this. And there we are. This looks like a camera equipment section. So upstairs, there are more figurines. There are more models. 
stuff and this floor is for camera lens, camera equipment. No wonder you see so many Chinese come here. So right now we are at the food court. Before it's too empty, so we wait at the, at the food court. Is it working? Yeah, the follow traction is working. So before it was all the store is empty. You see the green is face track. So the auntie from the food court recognized me uh, from my YouTube channel and um, uh, yeah, we cannot curse. She just taught me how to curse and I, I, I should not. I'm not supposed to. Okay, let's go. Wow. Well, that was obviously not okay. But it's kind of so not okay that's clearly not supposed to be so that way. It's not bad, it's broken. One of the great things about being a Shenzhen local is these companies are all right in my neighborhood and we check online all the time. Having direct access is pretty helpful when you are trying to do a review like this. So it was really easy to show the engineers the problem. They were of course super embarrassed and immediately sent me the link to update the firmware. I am going to flash that now. Then Go for a walk with the Femi Palm and the DJI Osmo Pocket, both in face tracking mode so we can get the comparison. The DJI at $400 costs double what the Femi does at $200. So it's not exactly fair, but let's see how it does. So I have two cameras side by side with my um, selfie pose and I do some little DIY on the pole. <laughs> so now it's side by side and it's filming me. So right now I'm heading for lunch. Uh, I have been eating various food these days. Um, but usually in Thailand, uh, I eat some Thai food, but not a lot of Thai food, mostly Western food, Japanese food, and Chinese food. Yeah, the Western food in Bangkok is pretty good compared to the one in China. It's uh, much better. And whenever I come across, like I came to this street, the aun aun aunties Where and uncles, thank you. I, I, don't, I don't know what they are saying, but they always have the reaction. This is like a booster and then there's little kids. I just want to take a quick moment to thank JLCPCB for sponsoring this video. As most of you know, we are having a bit of a situation back in China. But Shenzhen, where I live and JLCPCB is located, is in pretty good shape. Everyone is back to work at the JLC factory. They are taking every precaution to protect the health of the workers and are feeling others as usual now that the holiday is over. I am in Bangkok now. As you just saw, my girl Bam is keeping me company and helping me shoot some videos for all of you. Thanks to the generous support of sponsors like JLC PCB, I can work from Thailand for a little while. JLC has encouraged me to stay here until things are a bit better back home and that really means a lot to me. So if you need PCBs or PCBA service, please take care of the company that takes such good care of me and place those orders with JLC PCB. Thank you. So the other day I come in here and um, I found this place. Oh, they have um, corn. Can you see? Um, beef stew. Beef stew, yeah. Oh, so there is a beautiful girl. Oh, okay. Huh? Beef stew. This one. Uh, here. Oh, this is everywhere. No matter in Thailand or China, they have the um, Mexican chilo. Yeah, like a fried dough. So I think I'm gonna get... Uh, it's either sandwich 
or um, I like bam meat. I'm going to get some Vietnamese bam meat. It's better. They have alcohol, but I don't know if they serve it at this hour. Bam meat is not this one. And I have to get, go back and get my pie. Sawadika. I want the bam meat pork. I just ordered the Vietnamese food. Now I'm going to get my pie and probably get something to drink. Pie okay? Oh, Kaplan Kha. Looks good. Sawadika. Okay. Uh, I have um, beer. What kind? Beer? Beer, yeah. Pineapple beer? Cider? Pineapple cider? Yeah, sure. Hapun Kha. So I just got my beer. Pretty strong. It tastes like contact to me. Mm. Hmm. Tough. The Femi and Osmo hardware are definitely comparable, which considering the price difference is amazing. Where the Femi really loses ground is the firmware. The UI and functionality are just not quite as polished as the DJI, at least not this early version. The DJI's lack of a joystick really really hurts it and gives the Femi a huge advantage. The Femi's field of view is much more practical for vlogging, but because it centers the face absolutely and does not position it near the top, properly using the th rule of thirds, you end up with very off framing that needs to be cropped. This is something I've told them about and hopefully will be fixed soon. The Femi's touch screen is less responsive and the interface tends to drop into manual mode. I think that's what happened with the footage of Bam and I. The metering mode was wrong. But keep in mind that the Femi was just released a few weeks ago and they are updating the firmware every week which considering the health situation in China right now is pretty amazing. They've been working through the whole crisis. Both the Femi and the DJI have USB-C jacks. Neither one will let you plug a USB-C lavalier microphone directly into the camera. Big fail for both because neither has built-in audio worth writing home about. Both let you do it with a 3.5mm converter. But frankly, it's not a very clean solution and makes the whole thing pretty chunky. Final verdict. If you primarily shoot other people need a small gimbal and have a large budget, the Osmo Pocket is your best bet. If you are a relogger on a budget who primarily faces the camera and are willing to put in an extra couple minutes to learn the interface, you can get a camera 90% as good for 50% of the Osmo Pocket's price. No matter how you look at it, $200 is a huge price difference. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you all next time. And remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.